Welcome uh, to the Ellis Ruley Memorial Park. I'm Frank Manfredi and this is Sheila Hayes. Uh, we were part of a committee along with Lottie Scott from Norwich who helped develop this uh, area, which was Ellis Ruley's homestead. Ellis Ruley was a, uh, uh, um, an artist, a self-taught artist, an African-American uh, man who was the son of slaves who was born and raised here in Norwich and died here in this location. You'll see the area where Ellis was found dead back in 1959. Uh, his work went unrecognized for many years and I can never speak about Ellis Ruley myself without speaking about Glenn Palmetto Smith, who, was a, a, who is a gentleman from California and an art collector who really discovered Ellis Ruley and uh, made him uh, not a household name, but uh, brought him recognition that he, he truly deserves. Glenn found some art of his uh, up at a uh, flea market in uh, Massachusetts, the uh, Brimfield Flea Market. And since then, he went on a quest to f find out more about Ellis Ruley and uh, get his art known. And in fact, he wrote a book called Discovering Ellis Ruley. This area where we're standing was Ellis Ruley's uh, homestead that he purchased here in Norwich. Uh, he worked as a laborer, but was in a bad car accident uh, back in the 1920s, I believe, and eventually settled a injury case for a lot of money for back in those days. And with the money that he recovered from his auto accident, he bought this property and he bought himself a car and he got, uh, remarried and he spent his remaining days living here and painting here. If you look over here, there's a uh, foundation. This was where his house was, uh, this foundation, and that's where he did a lot of his work. He painted a lot of landscapes. He painted animals. He painted people, but he, he liked the... Uh, primitive landscapes, and that's why he liked to paint here. This is a, a beautiful spot. Uh, and that's where um, his home was. It burned down in 1961 after he died. Nobody knows what caused the fire, whether it was intentional or not, but when it burned, uh, it's presumed that a lot of his artwork was uh, burned with it. So there's not a lot of Ellis Ruley art that's around these days. As I said, Sheila and I were on the committee to bring this uh, place to fruition. Um, you can see we've created a area here with the fountain and the benches and the uh, pavers to be able to sit here and contemplate the beauty of this area and to be able to gaze down at the uh, foundation. Ellis was actually found deceased on the driveway and uh, he was found there in 1959 the cause of his death has never been known. It's presumed that it was a homicide, but it was never proved. His uh, son-in-law, Douglas Harris, was found dead on the same property 10 years earlier in 1948 in a well up behind us. Uh, he was found head first in the well. And again, that was presumed to be a murder and uh, there was an autopsy done. The bodies were exhumed about 10 years ago, five years ago. And uh, Dr. Michael Bodden, uh, who used to be the uh, pathologist for the city of New York and medical examiner, did an examination of both the bodies when they were exhumed. And he determined that Douglas Harris was in fact murdered or was a homicide, uh, but couldn't determine the exact nature of Ellis Ruley's death. My name is Sheila Hayes and I was the secretary to the Ellis Walter Ruley Committee. And behind me um, is the plaque where um, there were many of our, the individuals from the city of Norwich, as well as our major sponsors, stepped up to really embrace this project, to make the project um, really enhance it, what this park, when we originally started looking at the park and what we wanted to do, we had to raise close to $100,000 to do all of the uh, events and that we planned, we had two exhibits, as well as um, creating the park. So we wanted to thank our many sponsors and the individuals who stepped up. 
the gentleman who volunteered his time, he's an um, architect by trade, who actually designed and laid out the design of the park for us is Robert Groner. And he was very valuable and instrumental to the committee and he's a member of the Norwich community. Um, so Ellis really another piece to talk about is about his artwork. His artwork was done uh, just using paint, whatever household paint he could find, brushing, clapboard, or you know, just, it was not of a, a medium that you went out and purchased. So he was a self-taught artist. He had no formal training, but he, his nature, the, the, his artwork, when you look at his artwork, which um, Slater Museum in, at, on the campus of Norwich Free Academy has three original works, as well as the Wadsworth. There's a painting in one of the Rhode Island museums, as well as other places throughout the country. They're of very um, natural settings. Animals, he loved um, he, to paint animals. He also um, depicted many of our um, historic sites in the city of Norwich, Uncas Leap, as well as Mohegan Park, um, our Native Americans. Um, his uh, mother was Native American. Um, so you will find th those in his, um, the, those depictions in his artwork. He also used Life magazine um, as part of an inspiration in some of his paintings. You will see where the out west, he uh, had some western paintings where he would take the the covers of Life the magazine and then imagine them into his beautiful paintings. So his work, even though it went un noticed and unrecognized for many years in Norwich, he did at times sell his work um, for somewhere around $10, $15 in the 50s, and a gentleman by the name of uh, Mr. Gualtieri, who was the executive director for Slater uh, Museum, uh, worked with him and helped him to get his artwork at least known within the city. And it was just, it was just, his artwork is just inspirational. Um, when we did this park, and the park is really to embrace his work, his history, but it is so serene up here. It is so um, natural. It is so healing um, of a, um, just to come up here and just to take the breath of what he is, his life was like and why he painted the way he painted. So I, I just want to encourage everyone to take a ride. The park is located at 28 Hammond Avenue in Norwich, Connecticut. There are signs um, we also built a beautiful walking trail for those of you who would like a little more adventure into the park. You can come up through the bottom of the parking lot and walk the trail that was built. It's a very natural and scenic trail. So we're here at the uh, well that serviced the uh, Ellis Ruley uh, homestead. Uh, this has been rebuilt. Um, this well serviced the foundation that's probably a couple hundred feet from where we're standing now. It wasn't this well uh, kept uh, when it was in service or when we found it several years ago and it's been restored. The actual size of the well was the center of this piece here. All of this stonework is new uh, and did not exist previously. This is where back in 1948, Ellis Ruley's son-in-law, Douglas Harris, was found dead, stuffed basically inside the well of this diameter, uh, very small. Mr. Harris was uh, over six feet tall and over 200 pounds. And it was originally ruled an accident. And I, I think I mentioned earlier that Dr. Baden has determined that it was actually a homicide uh, and you can imagine that it'd be very difficult for a six foot, 200 pound man to accidentally fall into this little spot and drown. Uh, so that's, that's been pretty much debunked as the cause of his death. You can see we have an interpretive panel here uh, about the well and containing a lot of information. And there's more of these around the uh, park itself uh, with information about Ellis Ruley and his work. 
uh, much of the landscaping and plantings that are here at the park were provided and uh, put in by Joanne LaFrancois uh, of LaFrancois Flores here in Norwich, who donated all of the plantings and her time to help make this uh, a place uh, that can be enjoyed by everybody. So in this location, this is the foundation of the shed that existed on the Ellis Walter Riley property. We don't know what happened to the, act, the physical structure. Um, that We don't have any account of that. Um, and as far as we know, none of his paintings, when there was the fire in 61, none of his paintings were stored in, the, in this particular shed. We assume that he, it's where he may have uh, stored some of his paint as well as some of his materials, but none of his actual paintings were ever recorded having been stored here. But as you can see, the foundation is still um, intact as was the, as is the foundation of the house. Um, so we were able to clear this out and keep it for historical uh, reference. So we're here uh, on uh, what was the driveway to the Ellis Ruley homestead back in the uh, 30s, 40s, and 50s. Uh, it's, it's actually a lot nicer now than it was back then. It wasn't paved, it was dirt, and it was narrower than what you see here today. Um, but in this general area is where Ellis Ruley's body was found in January of 1958. Uh, he was basically found laying face down on his driveway, frozen in the night and covered in urine, unfortunately. Again, uh, I had mentioned that it wasn't determined that his death was a homicide, but it's believed that was the case. Uh, uh, investigations that have been done lead to that conclusion if, if you've read much about it. but. In any event, it was ruled by the medical examiner back then to be a, an accidental death. Uh, we don't believe that to be the case now, but this is the general area where Ellis's body was found back then. Uh, and if you look down this way, you can see there's a hitching post that we've erected in the middle of the driveway here to basically to keep traffic out for now. But this and another hitching post were found on the property up at the top uh, when we were uh, clearing the property for the park. And we thought it appropriate to, to bring that back and put it at the bottom of the driveway where, where it belongs. And it was rusted and uh, uh, very bad condition. We had it cleaned up and painted and it's down at the bottom of the driveway now. And I would like to mention that uh, Vinny Deganji of uh, Deganji uh, uh, Auto Body in Basel was the one who did all that work and he donated it uh, and did it for free. So that was a very kind gesture from him. So I'm standing in front of the apple tree that was donated and planted when we um, opened up the dedication of the park. And the apple tree has a significance to Ellis Ruley's painting as he painted one of his famous paintings was the uh, uh, replica of the Adam and Eve. And so that is one of his more well-known paintings that you will hear about. And so that was planted in honor of the Adam and Eve painting. And so I just wanted to encourage everyone to come visit the park as well as visit other um, entities in the city of Norwich that have um, pieces of Ellis Ruley's history. And two of the places um, in particular are also Norwich City Hall on the second floor. There was a quilt, community quilt that was done that depicts his paintings. Various quilters came together, took a painting that he had painted back in the 40s and 50s. You can see that on display of the second floor. There are also additional panels in addition to the three interpretive panels that we have at the park. Um, you can also visit Slater Memorial Museum. It's on the campus of Norwich Free Academy. They have three original paintings of Ellis Ruley. One that they had acquired prior to the exhibit. They held the only exhibit of his paintings in the city of Norwich in 2018. And as a result of that, there were two 
paintings that he had in private collections and they were uh, for a very reasonable uh, cost, basically donated to enhance the collection on the campus of Knowledge Free Academy and Slater Memorial Museum. Um, we just want to thank the city of Norwich. This property was in the domain of the city of Norwich. We want to thank the city of Norwich for allowing the committee to take the opportunity to enhance it and memorialize Ellis Walter Rooley as an artist for his work that was done in the city of Norwich, um, as well as become a educational uh, component that's added to our inventory of educational places in the city of Norwich. And it is now on the Norwich Freedom Trail and will be dedicated this month, Connecticut Freedom Trail month, on the Connecticut Freedom Trail. So we hope to see you. Um, please come and visit. Thank you.